Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Greg Pizzi, psychologist, relationship therapist, and board certified sex therapist. I'm speaking to you live from Miami on August 4th, 2020 at 1144 AM Eastern Daylight Time. This is my fourth live stream episode, which will occur on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, in the morning, sometime between 9 and 11 a.m. I'm shooting for 9 a.m., so uh, that's my ideal schedule. I plan to be here with you guys twice a week to share valuable information about psychology, happiness, the power of the mind, and the law of attraction. Uh, today, I will be doing my usual news item, sharing with you a feature which was announced in which was announced in my last episode, and that is what to do when your partner cheats on you. What to do when your partner cheats on you, dealing with cheating, lying, and infidelity. That's one of the things that we're going to talk about today, followed by a relationship and sex tip, as, as per tradition. Then no session will be complete without a gratitude moment. I'll share with you one of my most recent appreciations from my own personal life, and I encourage you to share your own in the comments below. And to end up our session, an affirmation, because ending on appreciation and positivity is the key to happiness, success, and overall well-being. Please like my page and follow me. If you're finding my information to be useful and helpful, I would really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Also, my YouTube channel, Badass Psychology, um, is growing and getting better and better every day. So I appreciate your support there as well. This episode will be published on Facebook on my sister channel, Badass Psychology, as well as here on Pizzi Psych. So again, please like and follow by hitting subscribe below and liking this transmission in this video, and I deeply appreciate your support. As a psychologist, I have learned um, a lot about psychotherapy and how to help people, um, how to help people uh, through traditional techniques. However, as I have lived more and gone through my own personal experiences, I've realized that we have a lot more power than previously believed over our own experiences and our own well-being. Uh, that's why I have turned my studies to the law of attraction, to metacognition, and to metaphysics so that we can understand on a broader basis how our vibration, the frequency that we put out in our lives and to other people affects the experience and what comes back to us on a daily basis. I believe that we can live the future we want today, that we can create our own dreams. And as a psychologist who specializes in relationships and sex therapy, my goal is to help people connect and find meaningful relationships and closeness in a world that is becoming increasingly more complex. My goal is to help you and anyone who's attracted to this information how to be happy, to never suffer or feel bad again, and to live the life of your dreams. Moving to our news item today. Today is day 217 of the COVID-19 pandemic. Also, day 217 of the year 2020. The quote of the day from the Secret app is, when you are feeling good, you must be thinking good thoughts. So you are on track and you are emitting a powerful frequency that is attracting back to you more good things that will make you feel good. Seize those moments when you are feeling good and milk them. Be aware that as you are feeling good, you are powerfully attracting more good things to you. Basically what this statement is saying is that when we feel good, it's our 
inner self's representation and communication to us that we're in a good place, that we're doing well, that we are in line with our true self. Whenever we feel good, whether that be from an interaction with another person or eating an item of food that we enjoy, listening to a song that makes us feel good, it doesn't matter what it is, but the goal is to feel good as much as possible. Because unlike popular belief, which feels that we need to suffer and work hard in order for the things that we have and deserve in life, the reality is, is that we don't have to work hard at all because our life is bountiful. We have an abundant universe that is wanting to bring us what we need and want and make us happy at all times. All we have to do is get in line and get into frequency with those good feelings and the rest will come to us. Whenever we feel good, all we have to do is find more of it, create more of it, and let more of it happen, and we will attract more and more good things to us and into our lives. Keep in mind, your mind and your thoughts must be operating on the same frequency as your goal. Your mind and your thoughts must be operating on the same frequency as your goal. Once again, I'm Dr. Greg Pizzi. I'm a relationship and sex therapist based in Miami, Florida. Today, we are going to talk about the featured topic of the day, which I have chosen for you guys. And that is, what do you do if your partner cheats on you? What do I do if my partner cheats on me? This is a tough one. I get this question asked to me a lot. What do I do if my partner cheats on me? Well, first of all, um, most people's reaction is based on one of a very misguided belief in our society, in our culture, and that is that when you're in a relationship, in relationship with someone that you love, whether it be marriage or commitment of some type of romantic basis, there's often a belief that you have certain claims or rights over that person and what that person does. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Love is about giving, not about taking. Love is about wanting the best for the, another person, what makes them happy. So if your partner cheats on you, First of all, decide what does that word mean? What does cheating mean to you? Does cheating mean that they lied? Does cheating mean that they broke a rule that you guys had together? Or does cheating simply mean that your partner did something that you didn't like or made you feel uncomfortable or made you feel threatened about? Um, we don't have rights to the people in our lives. We don't stake a claim over anyone that we're involved with and we certainly don't have the right to expect them or tell them what to do um if you're find out that you're the person that you're with did something that you don't like well talk to them about it ask them what that's about if you're curious about who this person is and really want them to be happy then you should explore with them how they feel and what their needs and wants are um, if they cheated on you, oh well, okay. They cheated. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to punish them? Are you going to make them feel terrible about it? Are you going to make yourself feel terrible about it and tell yourself a story that there's something wrong with you now because they did what they did? We have to realize that even when we're in committed relationships, we can't always be everything to everyone. It wouldn't be fair for us to expect our partner to meet all of our needs, and it certainly isn't fair for us to try to meet all of their needs. Ask them what they were doing if you're curious. Frankly, it's really none of our business what our partners do when they're not with us. What matters to us, or what should matter to us, is how they treat us and how we feel when we're together with them. We don't have the right to manage another person's emotional or physical life. They have a life outside of us. And uh, cheating, 
infidelity. These terms are invented by human beings based on years and years of beliefs about what we should be and what we shouldn't be and what's right and what's wrong. And they're all stories, none of which take into consideration the true nature and the true full physical and emotional beings that we are. We are human beings with an endless range of possibilities of sexual needs, expressions, social desires, and we're very complex. And when we fall in love with another person, we need to be sure that we're getting involved with that person because we feel good about who we are when we are in the presence of that person. Not because they're giving us anything or doing anything for us. We don't get the right to expect somebody else to make us feel good or make us feel valid, validated or make us feel worthy or attractive. Usually when people feel badly or get angry or upset because their partner cheated on them, usually that's a reaction to how they feel about themselves in response to knowing that they got involved with another person or they sought someone else other than them. Usually it's based on insecurity. Usually it's based on a sense of entitlement or a feeling that they've been wronged. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Why? Because what our partner does has nothing to do with us. What our partner needs and wants and says and who they are and what they do and what they represent is not a reflection on us. Similarly to how we're not a reflection on them. If I have activities that I'm involved in on the side or if I don't tell my partner something that I'm doing, well, that's no reflection on them. That's about me. I need to live with who I am and be as close to my true self as I can in any given moment. That's what authenticity is. That's what being your true self is and that's what honesty is about. So expecting your partner to fall into certain guidelines or act and think and feel in certain ways is rather selfish and it's not being open-minded and allowing for a person to really express who they are. And if you're in love with someone, then you really want them to feel open and comfortable telling you who they really are. So the question out on the, uh, out on the board right now, what constitutes cheating for you? Please answer in the comments. I'd love to see your answers and we'll discuss it right now if I get them in time. I'm going to close that card right now and I'm going to open the next one, which is, have you ever been cheated on or have you ever cheated? Have you ever cheated or have you ever been cheated on? And what was that like for you and what does that mean to you? Miguel, hi, how are you? Thank you for your little message. I see you there and you're always there to support me. I really appreciate it. Now, Next item about what if my partner cheats on me? Okay, so if you're not happy with the situation, you can communicate with your the person that you're involved with. You're welcome to say what you need, what you want, and express that, but without the expectation that a person be anyone, then they're not. Because when I'm with a person that I care about, I want that person to be free to be him or herself, to do what he or she feels he or she needs to do in any given moment. And I am grateful for the opportunity to be a part of that person's life and experience. And I will encourage open communication about whatever it is with the understanding that we will always do our best to respect and care for one another as much as possible because that's what relationships are about acceptance. Acceptance, love, and working through any difficult moments that come up, no matter what, what they're about. So again, I encourage your, hi Cindy, saludos. I encourage you to ask any questions down there, below in the comments, as you all know. Hi Lena, great to see you. Thank you for your support. Ask me any questions in the comments and I will address them for you. I make sure I get back to everybody. So. 
Next, I am going to do my sex and relationship tip. Ready? I know you guys have been waiting for this. Couples who share their sexual fantasies are the couples who report the highest level of sexual satisfaction, regardless of whether those sexual fantasies are actually acted out or not. So let me say that again, just to make sure that you guys understood this. Couples who report the greatest sense of sexual satisfaction in the relationship are the couples who report verbally sharing their sexual fantasies, regardless of whether or not they actually act them out. So that means that when a couple is able to openly talk about what their fantasies are, what they think about sexually and what they like to do, even if they don't happen, even if those sexual fantasies aren't acted out, these couples report feeling more sexually satisfied just by virtue of being able to open up and talk to one another about these things. So keep that in mind. Encourage your partner to be open and don't react in a negative way or don't react in a scary way if your partner brings something up because fantasy does not always have to become reality. And the ability to talk about what one thinks about and what one feels and would like is so important in becoming close to one another. Now for our gratitude moment. I want to share with you today one of my own uh, personal uh, appreciations, and that is that I appreciate my physical health. I appreciate my body, which I take care of by eating well, exercising. I appreciate my strength, my ability to get things done, my mobility so I can get around this beautiful earth and see new people and new things and have new experiences. And finally, I appreciate my senses, my five senses to be able to enjoy the people, things, food, events, animals, nature around me. And above all, to be able to connect with all of you guys right now. I'm internally grateful for my physical health and for the beautiful world that we are inhabiting right now. So on next time, on next time, what we're going to talk about is how do I know if I'm in love? How do you know if you're in love? Um, Lena, I can see your question right there. So you can just ask it and I'll see if I can address it for you. Um, how do I know if I'm in love? I get this question asked to me all the time. And we're going to talk about what that is in our next episode, which is this Thursday at 9 a.m., August 6th at 9 a.m. We're going to talk about this event. And finally, coming to our affirmation, our affirmation of the day. I get to decide what's right for me at any given time. I can set boundaries with people and things and modify those boundaries as I see fit. I don't owe anybody an explanation for my actions. Again, I get to decide what's right for me at any given time. I can set boundaries with people and things, and I can modify those boundaries as I see fit. I don't owe anybody an explanation for my actions. Hi, Eddie. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, everybody. Leaner, Cindy, Miguel, thank you so much for your support. Everybody else, you know who you are. I'm Dr. Greg Pizzi. I'm a psychologist, sex therapist, and relationship specialist. Please like my channel. Please follow me on YouTube at Badass Psychology. Thank you again so much for all your support. Have a wonderful day. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see everybody very soon. Thank you.